Hello, welcome back to the We Are City channel, back with our Manchester City career mode, episode 2 now of season 3. Things will get exciting in this episode because it's all about the transfer window. We've got games against Leeds, Brighton away, um, I think Wolves as well, but it's all about the transfer window. What will happen? Is the squad going to change? We haven't made any big signs, but we just might do. And we kick off today's episode with a game first against Leeds United at home. Well, a couple of tight legs and still players to build up sharpness, so we have rotated the side slightly for the game against Leeds today. Uh, in goal is Edison, we've got Walker, Lacroix, we've got Captain, of course. We need to make him Captain, don't we? Ruben Dash at the back, and Tierney. Edison is the only one who's not quite sharp from the first team. Phillips plays against his former side with De Bruyne in for his first start, alongside Nkunku and Cole Palmer. And then it's Sterling and Alexander Isak up top on the bench. Jesus, Makati, Stones and Zinchenko who need to build up the sharpness. And especially this man, Rodri, running back in that first team as soon as we can. Ilkay Gundogan and Bazunu join them as well. Laporte looks to be on his way to Barcelona, not in the side today. Cancelo giving a rest alongside Grealish and Phil Foden. Samiento, Torres and Mares. Of course, we don't know the futures of Mares, Torres and Laporte quite yet. And then we've got some of the young players as well. We do need to get this young man playing at some point. Maybe we get him on the bench today, in fact. I'm going to get him on the bench today just because if we can get him on and see how good he is, if he's good enough to replace Laporte despite only being 73, rated at 16 years of age, by the way, then we don't need to sign a left-footed centre-back to replace Emeric Laporte, who does want to, you know, leave the club. And I think that's a good idea to bring the young on at some point today, bring on Rodri, and then bring on either Makati or Jesus or Zinchenko for sharpness. So we're at home for the first time of this new Premier League season. Currently with a plus seven goal difference, seven goals scored, none conceded, and against a side like Liverpool away from home. Today we welcome Marcelo Bielsa's side in Leeds United, looking once again for three points, a clean sheet, and plenty of goals, despite having quite a rotated side. So this is the Leeds United side we face today. It's Van der Heuvel in goal. There's Shackleton, Cooper, Kosh, and Lewis in the back four. Pascal Strauch in the holding midfield row with Stuart Dallas, Somerville, Rodrigo and Jack Harrison in front, Patrick Bamford up top, I have to be honest with you, that looks like a lead side that could go down this season, they've got Salisu, Almiron, Kalasanak and Gellhart on the bench, but uh, I wouldn't be positive as a Leeds fan going into this season looking at that squad, and it is live from the Etihad Stadium, and straight away Sterling's won the ball back here, what a great turn by Sterling, and a great ball into Alexander Isak, and could we score immediately, what a goal that is, from Isak, what a bit of skill from Sterling, who has lit up the side this season after being shocking last season, playing in a more central role. Wow, ball over the top, clipped into Alexander Isak, and an outside the boot finish. Look at this skill from Sterling. See you later, Cooper lifts it brilliantly into Isak, who taps it in the back of the net. What a goal from Manchester City. Isak's already got three in two games at the start of this season. Sterling's coming up with the assists and the goals as well. 1-0 Manchester City. I can't believe how well we're playing at the moment. I really can't. We're very quick on the counter as well. And De Bruyne can play passes like that into Raheem Sterling. who's taken it in his stride, Sterling. And Sterling back to Alexander Isak at the near post. And Alexander Isak puts that one wide. And Gashardo knows the Swede probably should have scored that one on his left boot. Ooh, maybe he should be beating the keeper at the near post there. Rodrigo. I mean, what is Kyle Walker doing out of position here? That's on to Lacroix. Walker back. Not enough from Kyle Walker, really. Here's Rodrigo. Great tackle from Ruben Dias. Isak helping out his side. Into KDB. Look at Sterling moving. On the move is Raheem Sterling. Oh, nasty challenge on De Bruyne. We play on. Walker. Isak. What's your passing like, Isak? Brilliant. Tierney. And Kunku can't beat his man. De Bruyne. Look at Sterling run. What a ball from De Bruyne. Sterling with a hit, Raheem Sterling makes it 2-0. Tell you what, Sterling, I was so close to selling him this season after last year. I was frustrated really that I'd give him a new contract and he just hadn't turned up for the team at all last season, despite playing quite a lot of games. But I'll tell you what, Sterling is back and he's made it 2-0 here. And we are coasting past Leeds really. Just a bit more possession would suit me. But we've got players to play killer passes and the pace in behind, playing so narrow with those forwards in Sterling and Isak. They've, they're struggling, aren't they? They really are struggling against us. Phillips, Isak, counter Manchester City, Sterling, Isak, Raheem Sterling, burst the pace from Sterling here. Sterling. Oh, it's just over to Isak, it's not enough. Palmer picks it up. Back out wide to Sterling. De Bruyne. 
Palmer. Tierney. Oh, in towards Isak. Shackleton away. Corner ball. Isak was there waiting in the box. Swinging by De Bruyne. Here is Alexander Isak again. Brilliant header from Isak. 3-0 Manchester City. What a sign he's been by. I don't know how he's only 87 rated because he feels like 91, 92 easy. Great crossing. Isak with a header. 3-0 Manchester City. Just like that. Cross comes in. And he sat and nods it behind. It's a brilliant header, isn't it, really? I said he's not the best in the air either, but he's risen here. Heads that over, Van der Hevel. He's just such an all-rounder, all the Swede. 3-0 Manchester City within 40 minutes. I'll tell you what, our goal difference at the moment is looking very scary for the season. It really is. But they score it. Might not be making substitutions at half-time. And will be frustrated if they do score. There's a chance here, Edison. Gets his hands on it. And that is half-time. 3-0 we're going at the break. And I do think I will make some changes. We do need to get some play, some game time. Especially Rodri. And especially this young man, the Young. So a double substitution at half-time. On comes Rodri for his first appearance of the season. In for Calvin Phillips, who's been fantastic. But Rodri needs the game time. And this man on the ball right here. The number 22. 16 years of age, De Jong. But um, I think he's going to be incredible. A little bit too light. So Walker's going to go back to Diaz. Into Rodri. And Kunku. Palmer. Oh, into Sterling. who nearly gets there ahead of Van der... In the Van der Hevel in goal. As long as we get the price we want and we can bring in the player we want. And we did with, with Kunku. No chance here for Leeds United. He do score. No clean sheet. And that is annoying. And the young there could have been at fault slightly, the young centre back. Seemed to move across the left hand side. Give Rodrigo the space and he beats Edison. Edison can't save that one, but um, that is something to think about. I do think, you know, with Stones at the club as well, we've, we've definitely got enough options. I think he could be the Laporte replacement easily enough, the young, the young centre back. Oh, De Bruyne is having a strange game. We're playing. Not so good in this second half. The changes have really messed up the side. The chance here for Dallas who makes it 3-2 in De Jong. Young man comes on. Young man concedes two. Well, defensively we crumble since De Jong's come on. Him and Tierney's positioning is shocking there. What a hit by Dallas by the way, but... That is worrying. That is worrying. We have got stones. But I want this man to be... Be here. Ready for the team, really. Into De Bruyne. Back to Walker. Walker into Isak. Good defending from Robin Kosh. Corner Manchester City, but 3 2. And it's the first time we've really looked a bit worrying. Crossing by him. Rodri heads it down. Jesus to win it back. Jesus back to Isak on the turn. Can't finish that. Blocked away. Counter. Isak. A bit of an acceleration from Isak. And he, he's looking for the... What a pass. What a pass from Alexander Isak. 40 Manchester City. That will be game over. But what a pass from Isak there. That is of the highest quality to get De Bruyne his goal. This pass from Isak here. Wow. Between two or three Leeds defenders. Into Kevin De Bruyne. Simple finish for KDB. 40 Manchester City. That is game. That is game. Fly to Tierney. Into Palmer. Into Isak. Palmer. Jesus. What a ball to Kevin De Bruyne who makes it 5-2. That's a brilliant goal. That is a brilliant goal, isn't it? Gabriel Jesus. What a pass. This beats Isak's. De Bruyne with a tap in. What a pass. I mean, that's incredible, that pass from Jesus, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. 5-2. We've got no problem in the forward department. Maybe we don't have a problem in the defensive department either. It was just... We shook it up at the back. Obviously, it's a young player's debut and we can't much put too much pressure on them. Jesus. Into Isak. Good old up play. Into the Bruyne. Referee blows a full-time whistle. Well, the fans have seen plenty of goals so far this season. Five again today. Two conceded, which is disappointing. But a 5-2 win for Manchester City. Jesus was class when he came off the bench. De Bruyne incredible as well. And young man De Jong made his debut. Got to give him time. 
he's, he is fourth choice centre back, so he's not he's not going to be 90 rated like Laporte really has it. We've got four incredible centre backs. Lacroix is better than his rating at 82, really. And um, we started the season to, off to a blistering start, haven't we? Really. So confirmation here of Aymeric Laporte's move to Barcelona. 102 million goes into our budget, but the official fee was around 108 million. That is a big sale and a big bit of profit we've made in the player, despite his overall and his quality being 29 years of age. Well, PSG have made an offer for Riyad Mahrez, 73.1 million, again, making profit on a player that is 32 years of age. I know he's fantastic last season, Mahrez, and he's a great player, and I really liked him at Manchester City. His time is up, however, because he will start to decrease. He will start to lose his value. But 32 years of age, 73.1 million, that is a great deal. And for him to go to Paris... Being sort of, you know, Algerian and, and speaking French, I think that's a perfect move for Riyad Mahrez. I really do. So, guys, the time has come. We have received an offer for Ferran Torres. He wants to go back to Spain. 89 rated at 23. He's just so good. And it's such a shame he wants to go back to Spain, to be honest with you. I know he wants to join Barcelona in real life. But uh, Sevilla is... 147 million has been offered for him. Which, for a player that he played 20 million for... Seems like an incredible deal. It says we can get to up to 200 million for him. I am going to negotiate this one. I am going to negotiate this one, but I don't want this deal to fall through. Let's see if they have any players, actually. That could be interesting. Maybe they have a striker we could bring in. Well, he's not quite anyone I want from Sevilla. I know our guys say you can get 200 million for him. I don't think we'll get 200 million. I'm going to say 155. And they're happy with that. Sevilla are going to pay 155 million for Ferran Torres. Well, Manchester City in real life will probably sell Ferran for around 40 million or something. We're getting 155. It's sad to see him go because I really like him. I really like him. I know some of you guys in the comments really like him as well. But I think he will leave Manchester City, unfortunately. 23 years of age, 89 rated. Probably one of the best strikers in the game. We've got Isak. We need to replace him. We need to start having a look at strikers right now because... Some of them might, you know, some of the strikers that we want might be on the way to some other club and we do want to pick them up. So we're going to try and start that out. I do want Ferran Torres at Manchester City, but it's not to be. He will return to Spain, to Sevilla. At least it's not a rival like in Barcelona, Real Madrid, where he could be playing them. I don't think we're playing Sevilla. I think he'll excel back in La Liga with Sevilla. Maybe he's a little bit homesick. And let's have a look at what strikers we should be moving for to replace him. Since Lima is out on loan, we do need a backup striker to Isak. So here is the big list of strikers that I have got to replace Ferran Torres. Now, there's different ways we can replace Ferran, um, and I'm going to go through them now, and it's difficult, really, to know what to do. So, my first thought was Julian Alvarez, who is a player who has played un under Marcel Gachado for a very long time at River Plate. Very, very exciting young player. I think a potential around 86, 87. When you've watched him play, he's got this sort of David Villa, Luis Suarez style about him. I thought, yeah, perfect. I expect him to be 82, 83 rated at least. He's 23, 79 rated, which makes me think he's not going to develop at the level he should be for this team. Also, he can only be you know, purchased for his release clause, which is for 52 million. Is it worth 52 million? That is the question we need to ask ourselves. Up next is a player that City have been linked with heavily in real life, and that is Dusan Vlahovic, a very different striker to what we have at the club already. 23 years of age, a big centre forward who is strong, who is you know, good at link-up play, who is relatively good in the air, something we haven't got at the club, so he's a very different striker. However, if we bring in Dusan Vlahovic, he's too good to be back up to Isak, so we'd have to play alongside Isak or alongside Sterling, but I know, I'm happy with that. We'd have to move for him now. He would cost probably the same amount that Alvarez would cost, which makes me think, well, he's definitely the better option then because he's higher rated at the same age, definitely ahead in his development. He costs the same price, but bringing Vlahovic in probably means the end of Liam Delap, because he's a similar sort of striker, which worries me a little bit. That worries me a little bit. Other than that, we have Darwin Nunez, who will cost us a little bit less than them, probably, again, around 50 million. 24 years of age, quick, strong centre-forward, but he's not a finisher. 78 finishing. So... We've got, we want a striker striker alongside Isak, not a link-up striker like Jesus and Sterling on the other side. That 78 finishing puts me off immediately, and that's why I'm going to take Darwin Nunez off the list. Then we go on to Karim Adeyemi. I think he's a popular one against, uh, for you guys. Around 31 million will come cheap, but again, I'm not sure. I mean, he's 79 rated at 21. Does that mean the end for Liam Delap as well? Not necessarily. 
can play in the wing. I do like him. I just think he's maybe too similar to something we've got already. Maybe he's too similar to Isak that he's quick and he's skillful and he's a finisher. Not so sure on him. Andre Silva would be a good option. But he's going to cost too much, I think, Andre Silva for someone his age. Um, Jonathan David stands out to me as well. But again, like bringing in Vlahovic, David possibly means the end to um, Liam Delap. But again, he's, he's similar again to Isak. Very, very similar to Isak. But we've done well signing players from Sociedad. But he's too similar to Alexander Isak. I don't want to bring in the same player. Uh, Robert Lewandowski is an option. But do you think it was Lewandowski? He would allow the lap to come through. But the thing is, he's too old for the price we'd have to pay. I don't fancy paying 66 million for a 35 year old. So we'll take him off the list. Uh, Yusuf Makoko is on the list as well. Borussia, uh, Borussia Dortmund's striker would cost around 50 million, but only 18. That would definitely mean the end to Liam Delap because of his age. And then the last one is Charles de Ketelara, who would come at around 34 million from Roma. But looking at the way he plays, his stats, he's not a striker. He's a midfielder. He's an attacking midfielder, and we've got plenty of them at the club. So it, it brings it down to these three players, I think. Alvarez, Vlahovic, and Adiemi. These three players, one of these will have to play, you know, replace Ferran Torres. If it's Vlahovic, we have to move now, because the chances are he'll be moving to Lazio. If it's Julian Alvarez, then... We're going to be paying a lot of money for a player that isn't at that level, but no doubt he could be at that level. It's just, I mean, at 23 years of age, he's the same rating as Adiemi. Now, Vlahovic is heavily linked with Manchester City anyway, and does that mean we should move for Dusan Vlahovic because he is the most realistic of options? Would he play back up to Isak? Well, he's only 83 rated in this career mode. It does mean the end to Liam Delap in a way, but maybe Liam Delap can still come through in the future. It's a tough one. It's a very tough one. I think I'm going to move for two of them. I'm going to get rid of Adiemi, and I'm going to move for two of these players. I'm going to move for both. I will pay the release clause of Julian Alvarez. I will agree a deal for Dusan Vlahovic, and then it's time for us to decide pretty soon which one to go for. So let's, you know, agree the release clause for Alvarez, 52 million. I think it's too much for him. Let's negotiate a contract with him and just see how much he wants. That was a bad idea, wasn't it? I should have delegated. I should have delegated here. Because now I'm stuck with signing him if he accepts. I can't return on that. Let's end the negotiation. That was very silly of me. I know I can get Alvarez at any time, however. I know I can get um, Alvarez um, at any time. I think we've got to try and negotiate for Vlahovic, really. He's linked with Manchester City, isn't he? I know we've got Isak, but whew, what a player. Is there anyone that we want to get rid of that we could agree in this deal, actually, as well? I'll look at that also. Well, there isn't anyone we can agree in the deal, but let's try and agree a deal for Dusan Vlahovic. His contract is up pretty soon, 23 years of age. What about what about 50 million straight up? We've sold Ferran Torres for 150. So, 50 million for Dusan Vlahovic. Would Fiorentina accept that? He's a very different striker to what we've got. They want Mares plus Vlahovic. Now, I'm not totally against that, but I think Mares to PSG makes sense. So we'll go up here. What about 60 million for Dusan Vlahovic? I think because he's linked with Manchester City, I think him and Isak would be good. I think him and Isak would be good. They want 70.2. Now that is getting higher than Julian Alvarez, isn't it? I was thinking, not much more than Alvarez. What about 63 million plus? We've got a couple of young players that we do want to get rid of. We've got Laurent Pinu, of course. Actually, remove him. We actually have a centre-back who I would be happy to accept in the deal. That is Le Monnier. So 63 million. That is 10 million more than Alvarez. I think for 8 million, you'd be getting a much better player. But what about 60 million? They want 70 million for Vlahovic here. He's very set on 70 million. Let's say 65 and submit that deal. They're happy with 65. So 65 million for Dusan Vlahovic would be the deal if you am to sign this man. And I'm thinking, is that too much for him? I'm thinking, is that too much for him? 65 million. Or do we go? 
for Julian Alvarez at 52 million. We know we can go back in for him whenever. I think we just get this deal done for Vlahovic. There has been a deal, a deal agreed with Lazio, and if we don't agree a deal for him now, we're going to lose out on him. I think we've got to go in for Dusan Vlahovic, haven't we, really? We've got to go in for him. He's linked with Manchester City. I know we've got Isak, but him and Isak, him on the bench, Jesus is a winger. I think there's plenty of space in the squad. He wants sporadic squad role. Wow, he's really not highly rated on this game at all. A five-year contract for the Serb. It's good by me. No release clause. Very much agreeable. Now let's talk about salary. What about 80,000 per week? 100,000 signing bonus. I mean, we're going to have goals galore in this team. So many goals. He wants 100,000 per week. A bit more signing bonus, 900,000. We're happy with that. I'm sure Vlahovic will accept that. From Fiorentina to Manchester. We agree a deal for the big Serbian. What a signing. He's going to be second choice, first choice, battling up top there. It might mean the end of Liam de Lapp. We'll have to see in the future, depending on the formations. Because Shadow just like these two striker formations. So we do need more strikers. We've got a striker in Vlahovic. Welcome to Manchester City. And confirmation here, Riyad Mahrez has moved to Paris Saint-Germain for 73 million. We've made a lot of money in this transfer window. We can afford to spend 65 million on a player like Dusan Vlahovic. Well, I've decided on the, the squad numbers. Lucas de Jong will met wear the number 12. That's the way it's going to be. And Dusan Vlahovic, I just why it just seemed to suit him. He will wear the number 22 here at Manchester City. Well, this is how the team is looking, and I think that is pretty much squad complete, isn't it? It really is. Rodri there. Probably getting ahead of Gundogan, really. He will play ahead of Phillips when we can get his sharpness up. But I think that is pretty much squad complete in my eyes. The team is done. Of course, Fernand Torres looks to be leaving, which is a shame. But that's the way it's going to be. Lemonier, Van der Meer and Pini will be moved on. But that is a fantastic squad. I am really, really happy with that team. And back into the match day action now. As today we face ninth place Brighton away from home at the Amex Stadium. So this aside for Brighton, an attacking side, especially in that midfield today, we said we would do against a smaller team. So Edison in goal, it's Cancelo, Stones, Captain Diaz and Tierney in the back four. Phillips, De Bruyne and Grealish in the midfield three with Foden in front and Jesus and Isak up top. On the bench, Gavin Bezunu, Kyle Walker, Maxence Lacroix, Rodri Gundogan. Sterling drops the bench today to let Jesus play a bit due to his unhappiness with not playing, I think. And Dusan Vlahovic does come onto the bench. He could make his debut today. Amex Stadium today, Manchester City versus Brighton away from home. Our second away game of the season. The last finished in a 7-0 win. Brighton will be looking to do better than Liverpool today. Surely they do better than Liverpool. I think he's like Yere Mina in the back for Brighton. Look like they've got quite a good few players in their team. Moussa Dembele up top as well alongside Mopai. Looks like a strong Brighton side actually. Hence why they've stayed in the Premier League for as long as they have them. So this is... The Brighton team, Alvaro starts in goal, back five of Veltman, Yere Mina, Tariq Lamptey, Lewis Dunk and Sully March. Here's Basuma and Alexis McAllister in the midfield too with Emepu in front of them. And it's Mopai with Moussa Dembele up top. Now Kukurea, Sima, Liam De Lapp on loan from us is on the bench. Matt Clark as well, I'm hoping to see Liam De Lapp come on and play against us really. So Manchester City versus Brighton and it's live from the Amex Stadium. And it's De Bruyne. Foden. Cancelo, back to Phil Foden, Foden, ooh, strike from range, save from Alvaro, into Tierney, Tierney, into Isak, who's up, not enough, Cancelo down to De Bruyne, into Grealish, Tierney again, Foden, Isak on the volley, brilliant goal from Manchester City, brilliant, brilliant goal, well worked, and Isak smashes one in on the volley, Really nice goal, well worked. Foden just nods it down on the Tierney cross. Worked it so, so well. We really did. Grisha the back into Tierney, into Foden. Knocks it down. Isak with a volley right down the middle with the power from Alexander Isak. First time as well, just as it bounces up off the turf. Hits that brilliantly into the top corner. And we lead by one goal to him. That's his fifth goal already this season in three games. I think he's going to be top goal scorer again, doesn't he? It's been fantastic. Tierney can't block that one off. Cancelo's going to get it out to Sully March here, which he does. It's on the north, and Brighton looking to work it well in Mepu. Chance, Edison at the near post. Good save. He always expects Edison to save that one. 
Cancelo. Isak. Cancelo again. Into Kevin. De Bruyne on the left foot. Good block by Tariq Lamptey. And behind him for a corner. Good football again by us though. This is a great swing. And Diaz is going to win this header, is he? No. Keeper's coming out for this one. And Jesus is there. Grealish also. He goes wide to Tierney. Isak. Foden. Back into Isak. Grealish. Oh, what a goal from Manchester City. Another one for Jack Grealish. 2-0. What a finish into the top corner by Grealish. So well worked. So, so well worked. And then eventually it fell to Grealish. I think he sat with the assist. And he just saw that chance just seemed to, you know, really line up for him. And Grealish hits it into the top corner. Jesus still carrying that injury, which is a big shame. Maybe Vlahovic can come on for his debut alongside Isak. That might not be a bad idea. Two strikers up top. And he goes into Cancelo. He then goes into Phil Foden. Oh, and they give it back to Cancelo here. And into Isak, who makes it 3-0 Manchester City. We are way too good. We are way too good. 3-0 Isak again. Who needs Ferran Torres when you've got Alexander Isak? Who needs him? Enjoy your time in Spain, Ferran. He's still saying Jesus should come off for Sterling. Maybe we'll make that change. On comes Raheem Sterling. Great hit from Isak. Cuts across it with the left boot. Into the back of the net. And off comes Jesus. The injured Jesus. Hopefully that's not for too long. And on comes Raheem Sterling. Lively as always, Raheem. Grealish. What a ball. Isak. Good block. Phone of the rebound. De Bruyne on the rebound himself. And good save by the goalkeeper. Could have squared that to Sterling, really. Probably should have squared that to Sterling from Alexander Isak. He's in there again. Stones dives in. It's not enough. Diaz with a foul there. Will be a free kick to Brighton. Too far out for them to try it. But look at how many play how many fans have left the stadium already. Brighton fans clearly not happy with the side. But what do you expect against Manchester City? Phillips. Great pass. Tierney. Into Foden. Oh, it deserved a goal at the end of it. It deserved a goal at the end of it. And Stones are your third choice, I think. We're never going to be in trouble. That allows De Jong the chance to improve as a young player. Edison. What a ball. Sterling. Look at Isak arriving. I can see him arriving, Isak. I can see him arriving. I can see him arriving. Oh, and he's put it wide. Sterling. Through to Alexander Isak. Here's Isak. Isak. What a save by the goalkeeper. Here's Isak. Foden. De Bruyne. What a ball. Sterling. Good save again by the goalkeeper. Foden from range. What a save again. Foden down to De Bruyne. De Bruyne from range. Another save by the goalkeeper. He's had a class game for Brighton. Foden. Why to Tierney. Not he down to Sterling. And Yere Mina. He's not going to beat for pace. I can tell you that. Still into Grealish. Oh, what a terrible challenge. Grealish lifts it up to Vlahovic. How has he not scored, Dusan Vlahovic? What a save by the goalkeeper again. The thing is with Vlahovic, you can aim things into him and he'll nod him down like that. And Raheem Sterling, the goalkeeper, with another save. Put in by Cancelo. Kukureo once more. Good across crossing. Cancelo looks to stop it. Still McAllister. He has out. Chance here. Chance for Brighton. They do score. That's really annoying to concede. Neil Mopai with a goal. No clean sheet. 89th minute. Defence let us down here. Tierney. Sometimes Kieran Tierney's defensive positioning is really poor. How we haven't, you know, won about 10 nil here, I don't know. Sterling. Foden. Just go over top to Vlahovic. Just pump the ball along to Dusan. Vlahovic, another save from the goalkeeper. Another save. De Bruyne sends it deep to Rodri. Into Ruben Diaz, who makes it 4 on the captain. Oh, he's actually picking the ball up. He wants more goals. Does Diaz, great finish from the centre-back. Lumped into the box. Nodded down by Rodri. And Ruben Diaz with a really good finish, really, for a centre-back. And the Amex empties by even more. I think that will be full-time. 
And that is full time. A 4 1 win against Brighton. I'll be really interested to see how many saves that goalkeeper made because he was absolutely incredible in that game. Gashado shakes hands with Graham Potter. Another win for us at the start of the season. Well, Alvaro Fernandez Llorente faced 23 shots today, 16 were on target, and he made 12 saves. A save succession rate of 75%. Wow. And that interests me to look at Edison because obviously. We've been having problems with Edison. What is his save percentage? 80%, so that's pretty good as well. But wow, well played their goalkeeper. So confirmation here, Ferran Torres, 155 million, makes the move back to Spain with Sevilla. What a profit we made in him. And we've got a good sign, I'm sure, in Vlahovic to replace him. Which well, transfer deadline day, most of our business is done, really. I don't think there's any more outgoings, particularly, that I can think of. I suppose Pinho and Van der Meer and also Le Manier, but I'm happy to keep those three in the round the squad but our in incomings I think are completely done unless we receive a ridiculous offer for someone like Kyle Walker and then have to look into maybe the market for a right back something like that but I can't see that happening so no movement at all for us on transfer deadline there you can see here some of the top deals Ferran Torres going to Sevilla I think will be the biggest deal of the window you see there as well Martin Odegaard went back to Real Madrid Alfonso Davis to Barcelona and Laporte to Barcelona they have spent some big money off Barca. Uh, Marlon's gone to Manchester United. Sanchez to Dortmund. Phil and Mendy to Leicester City. Paqueta to Bayern Munich. Maris to PSG. And Dombele to Roma. To Chimeni to Wolfsburg. They've got, uh, of course, Vlahovic to us for inverts. It was an option for Kevin De Bruyne replacement. Possibly not anymore. He has joined Piemonte Calcio, which is Juventus. Arsenal have signed Calvert-Lewin. Richarlison to, um, I think that is Atalanta. We've got Schlager to Villarreal. Buendia to Leipzig, Trellis to Southampton, Immobile to Valencia, Fekir to Real Sociedad, Kulabali to Arsenal, Unai Simon to Inter Milan, uh, Canate to Lazio, Romero to Chelsea from Atalanta, Kudos to Everton, Wolfsburg have signed Jack Harrison as well, 50 million from Leeds, not how good he has uh, got, you know, since he left Manchester City, Boadu to Real Betis, they're the top moves really. Top moves. I mean, Gardevoir has also gone to Borussia and Gladbach. Thiago's moved from Liverpool to Leicester. And Giovanna Reina to Spurs. So some very interesting moves in the transfer market. The most recent ones, Haidara from RB Leipzig has moved to Atalanta. Somebody who's been linked with Manchester United. So final game of our second episode time now. And we welcome a side from the Midlands, Wolves, to the Etihad Stadium. So this is a side for Wolves. Edison starts to go. It's Cancelo, Lacroix, Diaz and Tierney in the back four. Rodri, Gundogan and Grealish in the midfield three. Phone in front. And it's Isak and Sterling up top. On the bench, Vlahovic, Jesus, McAtee, De Bruyne, Phillips, De Jong and Bazzuni. Looking to get De Jong and McAtee involved today, if we can. I know Nkunku's not played much game, uh, had much game time either, which is disappointing. The same for Sarmiento and people, but uh, these two especially need to get them a bit more game time. And especially the sharpness of De Jong because he is the man for the future. So Manchester City versus Wolves today, final game of today's episode, which has been an exciting one for transfers, hasn't it? Dusan Vlahovic joins Manchester City. And uh, what a squad we've built here. What a squad we've built here. I know Mahrez has gone, I know Ferran Torres has gone, I know why Merit Laporte's gone, but we've still got such a strong side. A side that is looking like they will coast the Premier League title, and it's all about that Champions League trophy this season. Can we win the Premier League on the bounce once again? So a side that is uh, weaker than it usually is. I know Adama Traore is in there and Morgan Gibbs-White. Shamedo at the fullback position. They're very different to how they usually look. Ratchet from Valencia's side, which is a good signing actually. And Marcus Juan, Jose Juan Marcus up top. Even, I think it could be Eric Garcia at the back there for Wolves, but not the side you expect from them. Not when they had Ruben Neves and Moutinho and people in midfield. And Rodri, of course, back in there for us today in midfield. Foden. Through to Gundogan, what a ball. Back to Isak on the turn. Phone on the volley. Jose Sarr always gets that one. He wouldn't let me use phone to try and battle to try and, you know, put Sarr off there. I think Pedro Neto is up top for them, interestingly enough. Tierney, terrible challenge. Terrible challenge from Tierney. The ball's there to be won. He misses it. And I think that could be one of our first yellow cards of the season there. I actually feel like the most difficult side we've faced so far this season. You feel a bit too lively for me at the moment. Tomato. Edge of the box. Roger with a great block. Milkai going to add up to Grealish. And this is the way we counter now. Grealish. Grealish still. Grealish still. Oh, and he looked to go all the way there, Jack. Back to Grealish. Edge of the box to Isak. 
Alexander Isak. Ooh, it's just past the post. Fizzy's just past the crossbar. There's the shot from Alexander Isak. Foden. Got to get that pass into Tierney, which he does. And back to Phil Foden. And here's Foden. And Foden to Alexander Isak. Oh, he lets it run for a mile there, Isak. I don't know what he's done that for. Still is the only one with any bit of, you know, complacency with the ball. Oh, Adam has done us there. Chance here. Save by Edison. An odd one. Gibbs White gets the yellow card. I tell you what, he's been absolutely class, Morgan Gibbs White. Absolutely class. And players that impress me I tend to want to sign them. Chance here for Wolves. Easy one for Edison. Cancelo. Cancelo into Sterling. Can he get there? Can he get there? Oh, great defending from Shaletta Sart. The Croatian at the back. So close to scoring yet so far. This Diaz with the injury, which is worrying. And here's Pedro Neto. And Neto and Lacroix dives in. A good save from Edison. And it looks like Ruben Diaz is going to have to come off. Or to lose. The captain is bad. Youngster De Jong comes on. No stones on the bench today because I thought about playing De Jong. How silly was I? So a chance for the young lad to impress. Gundogan. Cancelo. Oh, power pass from Gundogan and Nutmeg as well on him. Gibbs White runs away with the ball. That is half time. Not a good first half, really, to end this episode. And also, the injury to Diaz is a worrying one. So, second half underway. They've made a substitution as well. Morgan Gibbs White off for Fran Beltran. Well, why you take Morgan Gibbs White off after that first half performance? I don't know. Neto, tackled by De Jong. Oh, they're in a chance here, though. Semedo across the box. Good save by Edison. Well, it's been a very evenly matched game. Ball in behind here to Adama Traore. Edison off his line. Good goalkeeper by Edison. It's not enough. Adama still footing by Lacroix. And Wolves score. And Wolves take the lead here. And we've been talking about strolling away with the title. They're 1-0 down. And we said you shouldn't have took Morgan Gibbs White off. Well, they took him off and brought on this man, Fran Beltran. It's a penalty anyway by Lacroix. What a finish from Fran Beltran. Into the top corner by the Spaniard. The ex-Vigo man. Isak off. And we look to Dusan Vlahovic to rescue us. We really do. Here we go. Gundogan. Rodri. Straight through the middle we go with Raheem Sterling. And Sterling away from the defender. And Sterling finish from here. He can't save by Jose Sat in goal. Cross comes in from the corner. It's Dusan Vlahovic up and he heads it home. And he levels it up at 1-1. Well, we said it was up to Vlahovic to rescue us today. And he comes off the bench and does. Swing in from Phil Foden. Vlahovic on the end of it. Big header by the Serb. And levels it up at 1-1 here. It's a big point, really, at the start of the season. You can't be dropping points this early on. Three points here is massive for us. Grealish. De Jong. Sterling. Getting the big boys in the box here. Lahovic. Cancelo. Pulls it back. Phil Foden. Oh, and he just can't get that one in. Grealish. Grealish off the crossbar from Jack Grealish. Cancelo involved again. Vlahovic back out to Rodri. <sighs> Bring it We have Kevin De Bruyne on the bench. I didn't think that. Well, De Bruyne is going on for Gundogan. He would have come on earlier if I'd known. It's KDB time. All of the top here. Maxence Lacroix across to Adama Traore. Good block. And De Jong away. Sterling and Tierney try and combine. Semedo on. On him. Grealish. Grealish. Vlahovic! Oh, what a goal from Dusan Vlahovic. Volley acrobatics in the box. And 2-1 we lead Wolves. What a goal that is. What a goal that is. Please come off the bench here. Our second choice striker at the club to battle with Isak to score the goals. Isak had a shocker today for whatever reason. Couldn't get into the game at all. But in this man, we've got a man who is in the box all the time. What a goal that is from Dusan Vlahovic. What a goal. He's second for Manchester City. Has he come off the bench? De Bruyne is coming on now. We don't need him. Even more attacking threat when really we wanted defensive. You know, a bit of running maybe and Kunku would have been the man if he was on the bench. De Jong's going to do well here. Oh, he's lost out here, young De Jong. Omangituka into Pedro Neto. What a save by Edison. De Bruyne. 
Oh, KDB. Much better than that usually. And Wolves one last chance here. Adama. No, I think we've, we've I think we've cut this out. Or have we? Laquine there. Rodri Long. Sterling down. Full time. End the episode with a two-on win. And it's all thanks to that new man up top. Dusan Lahovic. Two massive goals. Two massive goals that have given us three points here today. And shows that even when we don't play well. We've got players off the bench like Vlahovic to come on and change the game completely. And he did with those two big goals there. Two attempts, two goals, clinical up top. And that ends today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And we'll see you next time.